After having to rebuild my MOSFET driver, I am now finally able to show you the coil capacitor feedback circuit working and with a comparison of the DC input and output power. Let's take a look. My name is Ivo and I'm doing research into Nikola Tesla's radiant energy, which is based on impulse electricity. I will first show you the setup, after which I will run the system, compare the input and output power, and then I will give you the insights and the conclusions that I got from this circuit. Let me first show you the circuit drawing. All the information in this video is open source, which means anyone can benefit from it freely, as no patents can or will be applied. If you want to fund my research, you can do so by leaving a donation on my PayPal account, which is listed below. Let me explain it. This is my new PCB for the series MOSFETs. So that's the MOSFET switch, capable of 3500 volts uh, switching, which means I can produce 3500 volt impulses maximum. I'm still using the 4 microfarad capacitors to capture the positive side uh, of the ringing L1. So I'll only have the negative impulses to work with, which I want. I have the diodes to protect the power supply from getting that kickback of that po positive voltage. Here is my new tuning capacitor for L2. These are 12 22 nanofarad capacitors. Each capacitor is 2000 volts, but there are Put in series and this makes it able to handle 4000 volt DC which is more than enough for the 3500 volt impulses and right now this is around 64 nanofarad I didn't really measure it so I can't switch it here's the other tuning capacitor of L3 of the parallel resonance and this is still switchable because he has no DC component on, so that's all good. Then here is the DC offset module with the diodes. I put four diodes in series to be uh, capable of 4000 volts. The DC is captured in the capacitor, is polarized to the positive voltage, and the positive volt voltage is then stored in the big capacitor bank, which is blocking the DC from L2. This charges up then the coil capacitor. I added a fourth coil, this one, to the L2. And this fourth coil is rectified to DC into a capacitor bank, very large. This is, this is two times 10 microfarad MKP10 WIMA capacitors, uh, maximum 630 volts DC. And on the DC side, I put a 42 watt 230 volt light bulb so we can see the power and we can also measure the power I've got a milliamp analog meter here and I can read the DC voltage I've got a voltage probe on my L2 so I can see the spikes and the voltage of L2 I've got a same probe on L3 so I can measure the voltage of L3 and I have a current probe on L3, so I can see the amplification of the current current in L3. And that is something I still needed to show you since the previous video. Let me one more time show you the coil setup. I removed L2 from the circuit. So the top coil here is L4, this is the output coil. And it is close coupled to the L2 coil. The L2 coil is connected to the DC capacitor and the tuning capacitor. And L2 has this distance holder of 15 millimeters. And this is the L3 coil. So L2 and L3 are distanced by 15 millimeters. And L3, which is parallel resonant, is then close coupled to L1. And this is the L1 coil. This is a thicker wire, two and a half square millimeter wire or five meters for L1. L2 and L3 are equal size 8.22 uh, 
meters of 1.5 square millimeter wire and the L4 wire is a 0 0.75 square millimeters wire of unknown length because I just made them equal size. Okay, I'll now power up the system and tune it and show you the results on the oscilloscope. Please leave a like, this helps out the video distribution. I'm, by the way, at 71.7 kilocycles per second. And now I'm gonna turn up the input power and get way higher voltages. Much, much higher. My lamp also is becoming brighter. And I'm going way up there. I can feel the system is being energized. I'm going to 2 times 20 volts. Okay, I'll make a power picture again. So now we're at 2.98 amps, 2 times 20 volts. So that's a lot of power going into the system. I'm pushing in 119 watts right now. So a lot of power going into the system. The field is very strong. I'm keeping out of it. And if you look at the, the picture, we've got now 500 volts per division vertically for the yellow L2. And we've got around, let's select it so we can read it easier. We got around two kilovolts of energy inside the coil capacitor. So two kilovolts is pretty good. The impulse by itself is a little bit bigger. It is one, two, three, four, and five. It's around five times five is two and a half thousand volts impulses. If we now take a look at the current of L3, that is now 21 amps peak to peak. And it is still amplified as it is not a perfect sine wave. But let's take a look at the lamp. The lamp is brighter right now. Maybe it's not that visible, but it is. If you take a look at the milliamps, it is now maxing out at 200 milliamps. And the voltage, if you measure that, 251 volts output at 200 milliamps that tells me is a 50 watt output so I'm pushing in a hundred watts I'm getting out 50 watts so the efficiency is way down with this setup and that confirms to me that this is not the way to go what I have learned from this feedback circuit the L3 current is amplified by the displacement current, but the amount of amplification depends on the impulse position. By using the bucking L1 and L2 coil distance, I am able to tune the impulses to the resonant current sine wave. So this is the current curve of L3. When the impulse is tuned to the current maximum, the amplification in L3 is minimal. If I pl place the impulse on the current maximum, there will be a small amplification of the current. It will give a small bump and that's it. When the impulse is tuned to the resonant power maximum, the current is much more amplified. So at the power maximum over here, so there is the power maximum where the voltage also is available. If I introduce the impulse over there, then it does give more amplification. But it is still not tuned to the most ideal position of the current sine wave of L3. Because the ideal position of the impulse would be at the zero current point, where the current slope is steepest. At this point, the current rise up rapidly and then transition over into the normal sine wave again. 
and the steepness of the L3 current must match the sudden intense longitudinal displacement current from the coil capacitor discharge. When the current is maximum, this is the steepness. So it's level. Same here for the negative maximum, it is level. Now here it is steeper, like this. Of course, the steepest points are at the zero crossings, like so. So here, here, and here are the maximum steepness of the current. To me, this tells me that here is the steepest slope, which means that there is the fastest transition of ether. The steepness of the L3 current is tuned by the amount of capacity parallel over L3. So the steepness, we can influence that steepness because with a little bit of current, you'll only have a small sine wave and the steepness will be fairly shallow at the zero crossing point. But when we have more current, like so, then the steepness will also be a lot steeper and the steepness needs to be matched to the displacement current speed. So the speed of the current change needs to match the speed of the displacement current. More capacity gives more current, which gives a more steeper slope. So with my next setup, I will tune the L3 current to the maximum amplification. More on that in my future videos. Conclusion. To be honest, I haven't tuned this circuit perfectly this time. The L2 and L3 resonant coils were not perfectly resonant at the same frequency. This could be seen by the L2 and L3 coils being slightly out of phase. I wasn't motivated to tune it perfectly because I realized it would never be efficient. The input power was only going up with using the setup which is the opposite of what I intended to create. The goal of the feedback circuit was to make a constructive feedback loop, which was amplified by the displacement current of the coil capacitor discharge. By looking at the output versus the input power ratio, I now know this setup is not amplified at all. I will not spend more time on it and it is not worth the extra effort of casting the coils in an epoxy. Instead, I will make a new experimental setup based on what I've learned from this setup and I will show this new circuit in my future videos. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell for future video updates. If you have a question, you can leave a comment in the section below this video. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with my new circuit.